Hello and good morning and welcome back to a spooky, kooky, wooky corner of YouTube. Ah, look at all the pretty things. I was laying things out that I'd made recently on my desk, um, just in front of me, just to inspire. And I'm kind of inspired. <laughs> I literally have a desk of everything at the minute is organized chaos that's what i'm saying and i'm sticking with it i know where everything is i th i think i know where everything is maybe perhaps <laughs> anyway we are going to continue with our wrap today our journal wrap which you might have spotted underneath all, <laughs> underneath all of these bits that i've but laid out. I was kind of doing a little bit of a photo shoot thing esque of all the things I've made <laughs> recently. Um, I think I'm getting blingier as I get older. I know I'm a magpie womble, but now I'm coming into myself <laughs> fully, which is scary and wonderful at the same time. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on with our journal. Okay, so I've kind of decided on my um, final layout. Um, <laughs> sorry, I missed the first bit of <laughs> showing you the, the layout previously because I thought I'd clicked record and I didn't. I managed to catch the second bit of it, thank goodness. Uh, but all you need to do is to lay out your base, as I said, and then um, decide where you want everything to go. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with this. So the next stage for me now is if I were you, I'd take a picture with your camera uh, or your phone or whatever, so that you've got an absolute idea of where everything goes. For me, I'm using my phone at the minute to film. And so what I'm going to do is try and get the dreaded pins out, I think. And then I am going to use my tacking thread that I used for the edges and I'm just going to tack everything down. So give me a second. I grab my pins. Or do I just want to just go in and tack it? Ooh, ooh, decisions. I think I'm just going to go in straight away and tack it. <laughs> I hate pet. I hate pins so much. I think I'm just going to wing it and, and tack it down as is. So I'm going to get a needle and thread. I'll be back in one second. So I've got this bright red tacking thread. Now, 
Um, all I am going to do, let me start up at one corner. <laughs> I suggest that you may be, sorry for the rattling sound, it's things at the side of me on the desk. I suggest that you may be um, pin these first. I am I'm not following my own rule because I, I just want to wing it. And I've got room to wing it, so I'm going to go for it. And you're not doing anything neat with this tacking. You are literally just making sure that everything you have is going to stay in place. So I'm doing huge tacking stitches. Um, the tacking stitches I can remove afterwards if they annoy me, but more often than not, they will disappear into the uh, background stitching. So if they don't annoy me, then I, uh, I will literally just let them be. If I find they annoy me, then I'll take them out. Um, that's, that's a rule. Rule of thumb I go by. So if it's annoying, it goes. <laughs> you can apply that to everything in your life, I think. <laughs> if it's annoying, it, it will go. Um, yeah, so let's, let's stitch this down. Um, I've not got too many blingy bits on here at the minute. Um, that's not concerning me because I will add those in <laughs> in another in another stitchy session. I think my concern at the minute is to get all of this stitched, stitched tacked down, should I say. And um, yeah, just make sure that nothing's going to drop off when I start to stitch. So you don't have to be precious with this at all, literally. You're just trying to keep it in place and try and get it from different angles. <laughs> oh, the lengths I go to not to use pins. <laughs> it might come back to bite me in the bottom at some point, but uh, um, I think it's going places at the minute, so we're all good. So you can see I am not being at all precious. I am literally just huge, great, big whackatin stitches just to get these pieces held on to the base of the outer fabric. And for it not to all fall apart. I'm coming to the end of my thread there. So... I'll do two on that bit and then and then I'm going to re-thread. I'm not even going to tie a knot. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'll be very reckless this morning. <laughs> Must be the moon. I don't know. I'll blame it on the moon. I seem to have lost my needle now as well, which is a kind of a worry. Uh, but I will relocate it and carry on. So you saw how I did that, literally just tacking big, huge stitches down. If you want to be very safe, go and use your pins. And if you're not adverse to them like I am, uh, yes, I suggest you pin them down. Or if you're feeling reckless like me, just go straight in with the stitching. I would, if you're going to pin them down, you're going to do a twofold thing. So you're going to pin it and then tack it down that's what I would do otherwise you're just going to be stabbing yourself with pins the whole way through this which is not very nice it really isn't you don't want to be a human pincushion I certainly don't um, so you'd be reckless like me and just go in with the tacking or you can pin it and tack it that is your next step so do that and then come back to me because I will have finished magically finished this by the time you've done Okay, I'm back. I'm all tacked. I've given it a shake to make sure nothing's going to fall off like I do with myself every morning <laughs> when I get out of bed. Um, so yeah, nothing fell off. So we're all good. Um, don't worry too much. You know, it's one of those things you can have so much fun setting out all your fabrics wherever you want them. And if something happens, you know, and bits fall off and you, you can't remember where they go, don't worry, just go back in and have the fun again of resetting them. I, I find that is one of the most fun parts. 
it's is just deciding where you want everything to go anyway we're all tacked i've got all my limbs so we're all good and <laughs> um threads threads is a thing and i've kind of picked out some colors i'm not going to use all of these by the way and by no means do you need all of these either you don't need loads and loads of threads just a couple of threads will get you through the whole of this it's nice if you've got a few more different colors to choose from i'm lucky that i've got quite a few in my stash so i've picked out ones that will go with all the fabrics that i've got here um, i may also throw in a gold at some point i've also got this boy which is one of the diamonds i bought this the other day because i kind of liked the color um and i thought that's an <laughs> the magpie in me likes the metallics this is the best metallic that i've used i have used other metallics and they're not easy i'm not going to lie to you they're not easy to use because they have a tendency to shed and thread and break um, my suggestions when using metallics are don't put too much on your needle you might be cursing me and saying oh that means i've got to change it every two minutes rather that than it get tangled and break and as you do each pass through the fabric this kind of weakens it a little bit it's the same with every thread um but this one especially so um not this one particularly but metallic threads in general are um temperamental <laughs> to say the least so a small amount on your needle will help the amount of passage time it has to go through if it's because every time you pull through you pull through to the end and every time it pulls through it has to go back again so you want to put as least amount of strain on your metallic thread as as possible is what i would say in order to help you get over that that being said the dmc diamond is one of my favorite metallic threads to use for hand sewing um absolutely adore it while I was there, I actually found this beauty. Now, this is one of those glitty threads. I can't remember which, where I, it says made in Japan. Oh, it's Gutterman. I thought it was a Gutterman one. It's a Gutterman thread, and it's very fine, but it's quite strong. <laughs> you can't even find the end of it. Kind of wrapped it around. Can you see that? I hold it up. Can you see how? Fine, but glittery it is and you can add that to your embroidery thread if you wanted to to have an extra bit of glitter but i'm not going to confuse matters if you want to add in some glitzy bits i am going to add in some glitzy bits because i am a magpie womble as you know so i will add in as much <laughs> as much gl glittery things as i can find and um yeah <sighs> That being said, let's decide on a colour that we're going to have to unite the fabric. So, let me move all these off. Let's grab them all off there. So what I tend to do, now I've got it all tacked down and I'll show you, it's shakeable and I can move it around. What I now will do is to go across my piece. You know how we did this? We did this lengthways going down it this was much more decorative this is going to be just going across my piece with um a thinner a thinner thread maybe just to unite the whole thing so what i'm going to suggest is actually you could you could use anything if you've got something like this i haven't got my thinner threads out but you could use just an ordinary sewing thread to go across i'm trying to decide at the minute how i'm going to do my how am i going to do this um do i want oh i know what i've got i'm just going to runkle around in a, bo a box behind me for a second and i do know what i've got somewhere in this box joyfully where are you it's wrecking the whole box now aha i have it now 
This is a rather lovely thread. It doesn't especially go with this, but it actually does. Hmm. It's a variegated thread. It's one of the Orophil ones. It's not the Orophil, or is it a 12? Oh, it is a 12. It's an Orophil 12, yes. So it's the same as these guys, I think. Yeah. It's an Orophil 12, but it's a variegated one. So it's going to change colour. And I quite like that idea. Having said that, a plain Orophil backwards and forwards across would work as well you could even go down to a thinner thread to do this job because it's going to be similar to the job that we did on the inner where you're just going backwards and forwards over the whole thing this unites the piece it kind of brings it all together so i think i'm going to choose that i know it's kind of not the colors that i've got here which i would usually go for something like that or that maybe and I still might change my mind. I'll try a line and see how it looks with this. Because I fancy being a bit more, you know, let's, let's be a bit more adventurous. So I'm going to try this. So I've got my thread. I've got my needle. And I am going to start going across my piece in a running stitch, a.k.a. this guy, but going the opposite way. So it's going to be vertical into the horizontal, if you can see my meaning. So all the way across, all the way across, all the way across, all the way across, all the way. <laughs> la la, la 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 la. <laughs> Ignore me, I'm in a silly mood. And once that is done, meet me back here on my desk and we'll see how we're going to proceed to the next part of our journey of journal wrap making. <laughs> See you in a minute. Okay, so welcome back. This is the next day. And um, as you can see, I have completed all my run rounds. Let me show you all the way the running stitch across all of it. And I did use this thread in the end because it kind of picked out bits of the fabrics that I'm using, but also still kept it kind of... Um, the variegated nature of it kept it fluid, so I liked it. So when I did a couple of pass-throughs, I thought, yeah, I like that. I'm going to keep that. So I have completed that. And now we're at the stage where we're going to do this, the kind of sealing down but protecting of the edges. Now, because I always work with raw edges, I don't mind raw edges. I don't mind if they fray a little bit as well. That's kind of the joy and pleasure of it which is why I never turn over my ends. Let me just take this brace off. It's rattling. <laughs> it was like a fairy bell. Tinkerbell's arrived. Um, so, yes, the next thing is to kind of just get, get some decorative securing down of the edges. And if it does fray a bit, that's all well and good to me. Um, if you were at all worried about things fraying, you can actually just turn these bits over. But I just really, you know, the whole joy of this for me is the fact that it's free and you can just enjoy stitching into it. And that is that is the pleasure for me. So you do it however you want to do it if you want to turn under ends and things. But I'm quite happy with the little method I've got of um, overstitching. Now, for that, I've got a variety of threads. Look at all these that I've dug out that will go. Not that one. That one I found somewhere and I've rolled up into a ball. Um, probably could use it somewhere, maybe. Um, but yes, all these beauties are now going to be put to good use going around the edges of the pieces on the fabric. So let me take them off again. Now I've shown you the joy. I brought you in closer so that I can show you this one here. So for this one, I took a contrasting thread. It's, it's, it's kind of like not matching the things in there, but it contrasts in well. And it kind of highlights parts. If you do that, if you want to make it a little more subtle then you pick a color that matches your fabric a la this one here 
So I showed you both of those just so that you can decide how you want to do it. You don't have to over sew, you could do blanket stitch. That will make more of a pronounced square because you'll obviously have the line going around the top as well. Um, sometimes you won't want to do the whole of the square, like for example, that one's hidden underneath there. So when I've done that bit, I don't need to do anything with that. That's all. And it's only the bits that are visible that you need to be worried about. And it is just an overstitch. So let me grab my needle and a pair of scissors. That's my snippy scissors. And which one shall we start on? I think I could finish off this edge here. Now this is, is kind of weird because it overlaps both, so you could just stitch over both. And then that's two jobs done at once. <laughs> Let's do that, shall we? So I'm going in with this very light pale, pale violet colour. Snip myself a bit off. And it's the same as the other things that we've done. If you've watched any of the things on my channel, you will know this stitch off by heart. It's one of my favourite <laughs> putting together stitches, should I say. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go from there and we'll bring you a little bit closer and try not to knock the camera as I stitch and I'm kind of, it's an over so but I'm coming out in the other fabric and don't put it too tightly because we don't want big ridges but we're kind of just making sure this all goes down. And you can put them as tightly together as you like or as far apart as you like. I kind of put mine fairly close. I mean, you could do something that kind of resembles a satin stitch if you wanted to. Um, but for me, I'm quite happy. I like the lines, the mark making, if you would, that this leaves on my uh, on my piece. It's another mark. A bit like when you're drawing and you're doing different kinds of mark making. This is the same thing, but you're doing it in stitch. I'm kind of doing a wonky stitch there. That's okay, it's because I am sat in an unusual position so that I can show you. But, you know, it's all, it adds to the charm. Everything you do will be you on this, so it will add to the charm of it and it will be something that represents you. So I've got that down there. And now all you have to do is to find all the, the kind of raw edges and just do some kind of a stitch over them to um, secure them down onto your fabric. So that's the next thing you're going to have to do. Um, picking out colours, you kind of just get, if you can see here, they're not all, in, I've got some pinks, I've got some like magentary colours, I've got a really dark one here as well. And these will also be used for the filling in stitches, which we'll come to next. But for now, edges that's what we're doing <laughs> so grab your threads grab your needle and have a happy hour or so or, or day or so even uh, stitching down your edges it just depends on how much time you've got <laughs> and that is the joy of slow stitching so go and do your edges and we'll be back here to have a look at some filling in stitches for the rest of the squares okay well we have got to the part now where Hopefully you have gone all around your edges of your squares and what we're going to do now is to start to fill in some of these squares with decorative stitches. Let me take you in further just so that you can see a couple that I've already done. So for this one I did like a seed stitch in a very contrasting colour but still matches in with my overall colourway or colour scheme. Um, so that's quite a nice, it's quite a dense one as well. It makes quite a dense uh, texture. That's a nice one to do. Um, alternatively, you can just go the opposite way with your um, running stitch. And that 
creates quite a nice texture as well. well. Bearing in mind on some of these, I'm going to do some appliqued pieces. So you might want to be thinking whereabouts they're going to go uh, and which part of your wrap is going to be the front. Let me turn you back up again. So I've decided that this part is the bit that's going to show on my um, journal. Let me try and wrap it around and show you. So that's how it's going to lie like that. So this is going to be the front and this is going to be the back. And it's quite interesting to find out where those areas are going to lie on your piece so that you can decide where you want to place any specific uh, bits and pieces that you might want to add in as well as the stitching. So for mine, I've dug out some, some of these bits I got from the Bazaar pack, which kind of fit in. And I'm just just trying to lie them on and see where they might look best. I'm going to play around with this for a while. Um, so now that we've got all the edges down, the next task is to fill in your squares with either bits of applique or decorative stitches. Um, you can use anything you want. The sky's the limit. Look through your embroidery books to find any stitches that you might like. There are lots and lots and lots of uh, videos on YouTube describing different kinds of stitches that you might want to use. You could use different stitches to join in the middle. You could have like a cross stitch. So for example, let me show you uh, another one that I did. So I've added little stitch stars into this one. This one's got a spiral. I do like adding spirals onto things. <laughs> so that's got a little stitch spiral. On this one, I did a flower. So there's a little flower going up there with a little uh, daisy stitch flower head on it. Another spiral there. <laughs> Told you I like spirals. <laughs> We've got beads. Um, so yeah, lots of things to keep you going. Also, I've got a couple of these buttons here. They don't serve any purpose. They're just decorative. And my, my other love is this uh, glitzy fabric which I get from a company called Paper and String. So, um, yeah, this is also little bits of that. You don't need too much, just little bits here and there just to add a bit of glitz. If you're a magpie womble like me. <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave this bit here. I'm going to leave this section here now and you um, can go on and finish all the other little bits that you need to finish. So filling everything in, adding in bits, and then when we come back for the last part of this um, journal series, we will be looking at how we finish it up. Uh, so adding in the, the, the lining, which has been sat here waiting patiently. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do in the next section. So have a great time filling in the rest of your journal pieces and adding in all the little bits and pieces that you want to for your for your one and then yeah that's how it goes like that and then we'll figure out closures and how you can finish it off have a great day and i will see you very very soon with more of the same bye for now